Welcome, everyone. This is CJ Maffers, editorial writer for ToonamiFaithful.com, and I have a very, very special guest, the man, the myth, the legend, Keith Silverstein. Thank you for taking the time to have an interview with of us. Of course. I don't know about the myth and the legend, but, uh, <laughs> but the man is here, at least, so I'm happy to be here. You've been doing this for a long time, so I mean, I feel the legend myth might, if might you, be adequate enough. He said it. I did not. <laughs> and then, then it's fine. Once he starts getting... Uh, little girl roles like uh, Love Live, then we can maybe give you that, right? I'm working on it. <laughs> I've been in a couple of Magical Girl shows now. It's just a matter of getting the right role. They keep giving me the villains in them, but uh, I'm working on it. You know, maybe a later Glitter Force, I, I'll actually play one of the girls. We'll see. There Who we knows? Go. Maybe, maybe uh, on a, a younger demographic of Toonami. But speaking of Toonami, yes. you have a great role, a role that a lot of people were looking forward to here. He's one of probably the most popular villains in anime recently with this new anime. I know Hisoka right. has been around for a while because of the manga, Yeah, and you got cast as that. How was that audition? How was... Uh, getting the role really of one of the more recognizable villains well you know i didn't know he was one of the more like when i got the audition i didn't know he was one of the more recognizable villains um i just knew basically the blurb that they that they'd given me and i think uh you know they described i knew he was a kind of a villain type in it um they said he was effeminate um, I'm trying to think of that. They said low, <laughs> low pitched voice wise. So that was actually part of the description because I know when I first looked at the image of the character, I, I thought of going a little bit higher. Okay. But they specifically said low. Um, and then I, I can't remember how they put it, but he clearly seems to equate sexuality and uh, violence and fighting. I mean, if you've seen the show, yes. you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's funny because if you watch like a little bit of the show, you might think he's like a, a perv in a different way. If I'm being just totally honest, right. if you just get a clip of it, when you realize that the character actually just really gets off on fighting and he wants a viable opponent to fight, and that excites him more than anything, right. uh, and he's got this bloodlust thing, then it all kind of makes sense. Um, but no, it was one of the emails I got at home, and uh, I just tried a couple of things, and uh, when I thought I had the, the right confidence in the voice, I sent it in, and uh, and luckily that was, I mean, because he, he, Hisoka is actually one of the more fun roles I've ever played, and he's right now my favorite. Like, when I get, <laughs> when I get a, a, an email to come in and and do more i'm i'm very excited it's it's um it's like therapy <laughs> in some be, weird way it should be exciting considering how long the series is too so you'll yeah. get a lot of chances to uh voice them i'm curious yeah. if you if you're caught up with the manga at all or if you knew about the oh. 99 series no i did you know the images of the characters and the show i've seen because i've been going to cons forever i mean even before i was doing this stuff i was going to cons so so i don't know everything i don't know all the animes i i, I know a lot of the older ones mm -hmm. um but I'm familiar with a lot, if that makes sense. Right. So like when I see the characters, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's I don't know what show that is. But now I know because I'm watching, which is actually really fun because I've been watching on Toonami and I'm seeing the episodes for the first time. Like completed too. completed. Yeah, yeah. We only see bits and pieces. And I think sometimes people don't understand right. that, you know, that I'm like I do. There was a big fight in the last episode. It was really cool. And I had like four lines oh, throughout it. That was like and one was like a fight. smirk. The, exactly. Oh, and so I when I saw it, I tweeted like how amazing that fight was. And immediately somebody was responding but like, you know, don't get so big headed. And I was like, wait, 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 this has nothing to do with me. I'm watching this show and the fight was animated. The choreography, you know, the way that it was designed and animated was amazing. What, and it, it totally got me. What's funny, this is uh, the, our cameraman, my brother, uh, yes. Greg, over there. It's his first time seeing it. I've seen it subbed. I've seen every episode. Okay, gotcha. I know what to expect. And yeah. I told him he needs to watch the show. And I knew the fight was coming. Yeah. I'm telling him he needs to watch it. It was, he yeah. was, his smile was huge. It was, <laughs> That's it was awesome. because of the slow motion. But <laughs> yeah. It goes fast all of a sudden. How confident he so It was beautiful. It was beautifully done from the beginning to the end to the close. I don't want to even want to ruin it for people, but just it's actually an artistically done fight sequence. Now, in your words, would you yeah. say he's the creepiest villain ever? He's pretty creepy. There's different. <laughs> he's pretty. I mean, even from what I've played, I would put him in a category because I also play Johan from Monster. Yes. Who's also very very they're different they're very different but equally creepy they're equally creepy ways, yeah. but those two i don't think i've i've played anyone else that's as creepy as those two all right well it's not just hunter hunter that will yeah. be hearing you with tsunami at least for now we have right. guy uh excuse me gundam iron blooded yeah. orphans i like there. what you did there you you put the title into one word exactly gundam blood orphans we, we, gundam well, blood orphan there, there's a there's been some funny little typos we've noticed as well <laughs> not on, not on your end or anything like right that, right but you're also in part of that project and you're also involved with more Gundam as well. But talk a little bit about Iron Blooded Orphans. Have you? Did you enjoy what you uh, worked on? Oh, absolutely. I, look, I didn't think 
I was going to get the opportunity to work on Iron Blooded Orphans because I had such a prominent role in Gundam: The Origin and in Gundam Unicorn. Which a lot of people seem to love. Uh, during an earlier panel, a lot mm. of people were bringing up about your Gundam. Uh, oh, cool! Awesome. It was just like. It seems really popular. It, well, Gundam is huge. Yeah. You don't have to. I had never watched any Gundam before I was cast. I absolutely knew what Gundam. I had owned Gundam toys, like the models. models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I had, from a child because they look so cool. But I had never seen it. Um, but I was very excited to be a part of the universe just because I know some things are just so huge and you right. know, and, and it is, it's big. It's like, you know, like just like Star Wars or Star Trek, like they're huge things you want to be involved in. Gundam's the same way. Everybody knows Gundam. So I didn't think I was going to work on Iron Blooded. Uh, I was honored to, to be a part of it at all. I play Chad Chaden in it, whose parents apparently had no imagination right. when it came to naming him. Well, we have biscuit, cracker, and cookie. So, I mean, yeah, so is they, it really as bad as you think? So, there are worse parents than Chad's. <laughs> but when your name basically looks like your last name's already Chadden. I mean, it's Chaden, but it's spelled like Chadden. Yeah. And then you go, let's let's name him Chad. It's, you know, I'm <laughs> just saying. Well. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's nice. Roll with it. It's nice. It's not just one show on Toonami that you're on. You're on yeah. quite a few, like those two at the start early. It's not you have to stay yeah, yeah, yeah. late for right. anything else. And it's better on the West Coast, too. Oh, I'm, it must it's be. It's a little easier to watch <laughs> on the West Coast. <laughs> there is one show that is probably the most requested to Jason DeMarco and Toonami, and that's JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. Even ah, more than yes. One Punch Man, believe it or not. Really? Yes, yes. I uh, Jason JoJo is, fans rock. JoJo fans right are amazing. The is oh yeah. Series. There you go. See, uh, you should be JoJo doing fans this. are serious. What, it, you guys are serious fans. I think I saw three just Speedwagon cosplays just this morning. Just coming here. It's funny. Speedwagon is my favorite character. That's awesome. Actually, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, you like? I like a lot of Joe. I like Jojo Kujo in the third one. Mm -hmm. I like. Uh, I like the fourth. Uh, star right now in Diamond Unbreakable but okay. Speedwagon I love the foundation because it's just it's so helpful for all the stars and things right. like that I wish he had a kid I wish Speedwagon had a kid I thought it would be more interesting like that I think he wanted to have a kid with Jojo and it just <laughs> it, it didn't happen you're not the first one to say that actually, no it, but it see he really did like Jojo a lot Jojo <laughs> just seems to be so popular and the fact that yeah. um uh now that we had a release of the first two seasons we got to hear mm. you be uh Speedwagon how cool was it for you? Did you know much about JoJo? Did you like? I, did you expect this much like fandom being like, oh my god, oh my god, about, no, uh, about I, the franchise? I didn't. I knew of that franchise because I believe there was a. I think there was a video game back in the day. Um, and it's just it's one of those things I just I, I didn't know much about. I had never seen, um, but I knew the like the logo for it and I'd heard of it. Uh, actually, and the toys are awesome. I just found out yesterday. So one of the dealers here told me that they do have Speedwagon toys because I haven't found the I've hat, never found hat and everything. I don't know I don't know I don't know which version of him it is but I, I don't care I'm gonna find them and I'm gonna get them he gave me his card so hopefully I can seems find like him. a nice character too he starts off as a ruffian yeah. but then he's like I like this Jonathan right, Jones star. Right. Let, let's let's be buddies and then he ends up explaining everything yeah my impression I mean, he just he ends up explaining what's going on and pretty much standing on the sidelines for every one of Jojo's battle I'm trying to remember if he ever Fought. I mean, he after he did his at some first points, but no, I get. It saying. seems like as soon as he decides, like Jojo needs help, I've got to get in. There's always then like a gate that comes down in front of him, or somebody he's got to protect, or something happens to where he's like, ah, and he can't. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I feel like he planned that. You could, you can, uh, <laughs> if if anime voice acting and video game voice act doesn't work, you could do play by play for video. Uh, there you go, because it's the same. Events. That's it's, what it's, Speedwagon is probably doing nowadays. <laughs> That's now, what he's doing. A tsunami veteran, a show yeah. that's near and dear to one of my uh, podcast colleagues. Okay, uh, Bleach. Oh, it's yes, one, yeah, I yeah. Loved, I loved it a lot, too. It's a very, very monumental anime at the time. Yeah, oh, yeah. You were one of the best around cars, in my opinion. I like Ul Kior a lot, and I yeah. really like Stark. Sweet, yeah. Uh, kind of paint a picture, because, like, it's a little reserved, kind of like Ul Kior, but it was more... You had a different cadence of, like, the loneliness that he had. It, yeah. It, like, there was and, a difference between, yeah. like, Ul Kior not talking, like, emotion, and how Stark was. Stark, the first description I got of Stark, uh, you know, if you really just are going to say it in one word is lazy and it's not lazy like he he's down to, to fight if he needs to but he's so powerful i mean if you know the story at all he's so powerful he never really has an opponent that he can really fight with so he's, right. he's pretty lazy he doesn't have much challenge or what have you he's the number one around car. so yeah so i mean that's a big part of his voice so mm -hmm. you know i take it really low like this and there's kind of that little bit of a bored thing that's going there on little that come on there was a great tsunami promo that had uh when they were on, uh, they had to kind of wait for new episodes to come, uh -huh. and they had Stark, where it's like, oh, how is this battle with Stark and the Bleach captains are, or the 
the captains of the right. guard or whatever they're called at the time. I can't think of it right now. Right. They're, and all of a sudden you just hear he's like, eh, I'm just too tired. You know? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's things. yeah. They can't, they gave me the notes they gave me were like, keep him lazy, keep him lazy. So, but it, it is the same thing. And we'll talk about Kimimaru right after uh-huh. this too, but you sort of feel for Stark after he loses his partner. It was, it's yeah. you, you seem very depressed right after it happened. Yeah. I have, that's kind of one of the niches that I've fallen into. I mean, not every one of my roles, but a number of my roles They're um, they're villain characters in the most general of senses. Um, but you care about them. You do have a good villain. Um, and you Stark, do. thank you. Stark, Stark is one of them. Cause when he goes, he's got this long monologue and you feel for him. You're like, Oh my God, the guy, this is, he just was lonely. Like that's how he got involved right. in this in the whole, in the beginning. And, um, Kimi Maro is again, Kimi Maro is someone who owes his life to Lord Orochimaru. And, uh, he's not a, in his own mind, he's not a villain. No. He's very noble. He's doing what you should do, which is to help the person that has raised you and taken care of you. I mean, he would have, he would have died as a child probably if Lord Orochimaru hadn't right. found him. Now, granted then he's you know brainwashed to some degree by Lord Orochimaru, but still I played him very noble. I didn't play him as a villain. And it worked. Um, it seemed to work, at least with the directors and fans. Yeah, and then with Bleach, there's Sochiro Kusaka from Diamond Dust Rebellion. Yep. And he's the same way. Like, you're like, what? Like, he's somebody that's a good guy who's wronged and killed and comes back to exact revenge. But the fun thing about that is you understand why he wants revenge. Right. So you kind of, part of you wants him to win. Like, you're like, I get it, I get it. But, if, of course, he wins. It's the end of Bleach, so... I, I love Stark's weapons, by the way. Those are really yeah. cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The guns and, like, all the other stuff the, that The guns and the wolves, right? Yeah. That That's... was pretty cool. But uh, Kimimaru, it's funny. One of my favorite scenes in Naruto ever, back... Not Shupiden, the, uh, uh-huh, back the, right. or the first series. Yeah. I loved Rock Lee's first fight with Gara, And, of course, like, that was yeah. really one of the better fights, in my opinion. Like, you see all the blood, see all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And the face I had when he came back, when he when Naruto was fighting Kimimaru, mm-hmm. was absolutely like so rewarding because like oh rock lee he's not he's not down for the count he's right 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 right. that had to have been such a fun fight to at least voice and then see afterwards because you have kimimar with his bones and like really really cool uh, power and then like rock lee drunk and rock lee being one of the more popular characters of it too so it must have been at least fun seeing that unfold as well when it was on yeah it was uh that was uh the first uh, gig that I had the first anime or anything that I worked on with Studiopolis, which is the no studio way. that oh, uh, okay. that does Naruto, um, and so that that's all, that's always gonna have a special spot in my heart. I have a special place in it for a different reason, just because Rock Lee came back, but it was right, still right. awesome to watch. It yeah, really. And you, well, I was very excited when it you, when it finally aired and I actually got to watch it. I was, I mean, because his ability was great. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Uh, last question here: You're mm-hmm. you're in a lot of video games. I I, I didn't realize this considering like. Uh, my brother was telling me Zaslamel from Soul Calibur, but the, oh, you're yes. in Overwatch. Which now you know the right? difference between you and I. Zaslamel seems so long ago. Uh, Persona Q you're in. Uh, yeah, Europa. Zen in that. Yeah, Mondo. So, tell me about how much you've been enjoying getting roles in video games and, and not just anime as well, like branching out in different genres. Well, I'm a, I'm a nerd. Um, so, I mean, I love, really? I love video games. doesn't give it away. Tar- yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell. Um, no, listen, I've, loved, I've been playing video games literally since pre-Atari. Um, you know, going to the arcade and I played, you know, Pong and, and pinball machines when that's all the only option there was. So I, I'm a huge fan of video games. It's amazing how far they've come. And it's, it's a big deal for me to work on video games. Like I'm not, it's not just a, like some people, it's just a job and that's fine. You know, they're like, hey, I do voices. That's, that's my job. But I geek out over it. I'm very excited to work on Street Fighter Five. I'm very excited to Overwatch is blowing up like crazy and a to be a part of, of that. Really likes playing it too. You're talking about Erica? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard she's pretty good. I, that's that's what I hear. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of fun with it. So I really enjoy knowing that a game is doing well and uh, that I'm working in on, you know. Keith, thank you for yeah. all the time you've given us. This is of course. a wonderful interview. Remember, we can hear his voice on Toonami for Gundam, Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans. I almost did it again. Yeah, almost, it's hard to say. And though. Hunter Hunter. So hopefully yes. you'll get And hopefully some more shows, too. Hopefully. We'll you see. never know. Thank you.